location, location, location. It is true that a lot of beekeeping is about management, but it's also true that a lot of successful beekeeping is about simply where you keep your bees. Apiary site is incredibly important. So let's consider some of the factors that you need to think about when you're choosing a place to put your bee colonies. The first thing I'll mention is, of course, bees need resources. And those resources come in the way of nectar and pollen. The ideal apiary site is going to be a place that has copious amounts of nectar and pollen through spring, but hopefully some patches in summer and fall as well. In addition to nectar and pollen, bees also need water. Bees collect water and bring it back to the nest to use for thermoregulation purposes. So they're going to have to have it nearby. Maybe they're close to a stream or a pond. Maybe this apiary site has a lake or a natural spring nearby. But if it doesn't, you can rest assured that they're going to fly to places that you don't want them to be, such as your neighbor's pool or the bird bath, et cetera. Speaking of neighbors, you also want to ensure that you keep your bees away from areas where people and animals frequent. There's a lot of ways to accomplish this. First, you could just keep your bees completely out of the city and the suburbs. But for a lot of you listening, you want to keep bees in these locations. And when you do that, you need to think about things such as keeping your colonies off of the property line, maybe 15 feet or somewhere in the neighborhood of five meters. That way, the neighbors aren't interacting with your bees with regularity. You might also consider flyway barriers. When bees fly out of a colony, think about it like an airplane taking off as it gradually increases in altitude. Well, if bees are doing that and people walk through those flyways, they can risk getting stung. So anytime you keep bees in populated areas in an apiary that's got people around it, you really want the bees to get out of those colonies and up over the head relatively quickly. So a lot of people will plant shrubs or put up fences near the colonies so the bees have to come out and go up over where people would frequent. It's always best to locate your colonies out of sight, out of mind. If people see your colonies, they're going to all of a sudden have problems with bees. But not only does this matter with good neighbor relations, but it also matters with vandals. You want to make sure that your bees aren't very visible to the public whenever that's possible. Other properties associated with good apiary sites include easy access. You're going to want an apiary that you can get into and out of easily. But you do want to avoid siding colonies in areas that are prone to just problems. For example, low-lying areas collect cool air in winter. They're also prone to flooding and you don't want to put your bees there. You also don't want to put bee colonies in areas that have frequent fires pass through. Or maybe there's just areas that are really prone to heavy rainfall or drought. It's better not to keep bees in those locations. Another important consideration with regard to siding colonies and apiaries, you just don't really want apiaries that are full sun. I know a lot of times beekeepers have to do that because that's what's available to them, but keeping colonies in full sun can really cause the bees to work really hard to thermoregulate, especially in summer. Likewise, you don't want to set your colonies in full shade because having colonies shaded can really lessen their activity. One of the old adages in beekeeping is morning sun and afternoon shade. So a lot of people try to get their colonies in an area where there's going to be sun available in the apiary in the morning to wake those colonies up. But by the time the heat of the day rolls around, they're in shade. Another thing to consider is bee exposure to pesticides. For example, siding colonies close to places that get frequent pesticide applications can be detrimental to bees. I think about areas where fruit crops or row crops and things like that are grown, where farmers are having to use a lot of insecticides to control the insects that might be pests of those crops. When possible, it's best to keep your colonies away from those areas. Bears, a lot of people don't think about bears and other mammalian pests, but good apiary sites are places where you keep in mind as a beekeeper whether or not these things are present. Here in the U.S., for example, we have bears in a lot of different places, and a lot of people don't even know they have bears until they put out colonies and discover somewhere in the next year or two that bears live in the area. So you need to know about things like bears, and if you do have those in your area, you're going to want to make sure and fence in your apiary to keep the bears out of the apiary. Another important consideration with apiary site is just needs to be easy to maintain. I've talked about ease of access earlier, getting to your apiary, but you also have to be able to maintain it. You know, if you're siting bee colonies under trees that might fall, might drop limbs, if you're siting colonies in areas that are hard to mow or get to, it can be really difficult to maintain those apiary sites and therefore take care of the colonies the way that they need to be taken care of. 
One thing that I'll mention as well, I keep using the word apiaries. I'm assuming that when you get into beekeeping, you're probably going to want multiple sites to place bees. So in this context, you really wanna make sure that you keep your apiary sites separated from one another. You don't want to have the density of colonies in one location too great. So as you site your apiaries, you really wanna be somewhere in the neighborhood of three miles or greater from the next apiary site. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that a lot of places have rules and regulations associated with keeping bees. You can have an absolutely amazing apiary site only to find out later that it's not legal to keep bees in those places. So be sure to look at the local rules and regulations associated with keeping bees in your area. And I'll put a special emphasis on homeowner associations because a lot of those carry with them the burden of not allowing you to keep bees. If you've done all of that and you're trying to choose between three or four options, my last piece of advice, just pick the pretty one. Beekeepers find themselves sitting in their apiaries and watching their bees. And if you do that, you're gonna want a nice place to sit. If you end up on an apiary site that you do not personally own, it's always best to have some sort of written agreement between yourself and the site owner when you keep your bees. Happy beekeeping. Thank you.